here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, looking at math, this is page 792 of our homework. We were talking about uh, determining convergence or divergence of a series, and we were specifically looking at the comparison test the other day. So uh, I've got to figure out what is the pattern here so I can compare uh, kind of our nth term here to nth terms of something to compare it to. Uh, so let's see. Sometimes I can gain some insight from differences between these. So this is up by 7. This is up by 19. Man, these are weird numbers. Uh, 35, 37? Huh. 7, 19, 37. It's not, it is definitely yeah. I'm trying to, uh, oftentimes, uh, now these numbers are increasing faster, so I'm expecting that they're somehow related to squares or cubes. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, one cube, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, yeah. Here's the uh, n cubed list would be this, uh, one, eight, 27, 64. So it appears as though they are related to the cubes, um, right, where that's uh, 1 over uh, 1 cubed plus 1, plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1. Man, that's a, that is a tricky pattern. I'm not going to lie. And therefore, my nth term, uh, a sub n is going to be 1 over, looks like, n cubed plus 1, huh? So if I'm going to compare that to something, uh, I think we could probably compare it to that little uh, 1 over n to the p. And um, I want to prove that it is smaller than 1 over n to the p because 1 over n to the p is convergent for values of p greater than 1. Uh, and I would suspect n cubed would be a perfect uh, choice, although technically, would it, would it, n squared, I suppose, I, th I think, uh, yeah, I think n cubed is equally nice, uh, so if I compare, is 1 over n cubed plus 1 smaller than 1 over, greater than, isn't this a, this is a convergent, right? So I want it to be less than, right? Okay. Ah, oh, man. Making me nervous. Yikes. All right. So um, we'll check this out. Which of these denominators is bigger? The one on the left. It's bigger by one. So therefore, which of these fractions is smaller? The one on the left. I think that proves its point. Uh, I just kind of like the symmetry of comparing n cubed to n cubed and this being like... Yeah, I try. Yeah, it was at a slope. I agree. But uh, so let's see. That convergence is the answer to that one. So how about uh, another question that I could help you with? I don't know. Even if it's uh, let's see. Did we do alls last night? We did twenty to twenty-three. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We could even look at some of these ugly ones if we wanted. I don't know. Is there a particular one you'd want to analyze? 27. All right. Might as well get some practice. So we do have a quiz scheduled for manana. And by manana, I mean tomorrow, not not morning. Right? Isn't that a... Mm, yeah. Yeah, think about that right there. Uh, so let's see, so our nth term, it looks like they at least broke this apart. It looks like n, yeah, so it looks like this is 1 over n squared plus 5 would be a breakup. And I think, actually I think this one compares pretty quickly to this one for similar reasons to what we had before. 1 over n squared plus 5 is less than 1 over n squared. This denominator, welcome, welcome, is larger, therefore this fraction is smaller at all times, therefore convergence. 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, how about one of these? Uh, I see this kind of square root one here. That one's interesting. Or 26. Do, 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 Actually, there's some interesting insight we could grab from this. Uh, yeah, I think fractional exponents are interesting. Uh, so I could call my nth term 1 over the square root of n, one over n. or 1 over n to the half. And if I think about that uh, series 1 over n to the p, that is only convergent for values of p greater than 1. And I know when p is equal to 1, then it's just specifically the harmonic series, which is divergent. And the p to the 1 half, I would guess, I would have guessed immediately is divergent. But let's compare this. Um, I would suspect that this is greater than 1 over n. And I think this can be done with just a general analysis. Again, you wouldn't have to necessarily plug in values. But uh, comparing those two denominators, which denom denominator? Which denominator is smaller? 1 over the square root, a square root of n, as long as n is bigger than 1, which it is, uh, is smaller than n, right? Uh, so this denominator is smaller, therefore making this fraction larger for all values of n greater than 1. So this is true, and therefore I have no fear calling this divergent, right? And it seems as though that would be the case also for 1 over the cubed root of n, 1 over the fifth root of n. 1 over n to the 2 thirds power? 1 over any root of n. Yes. Unless the root itself had an index which was a fraction, because then you'd have a fraction of a fraction of the exponent and it would reciprocate and become a. But that's ridiculous stuff. There's n whoever would do a half root, you would just call it squaring. Am I right? Yeah. Half root. Uh. Blah. Um, this one looks interesting, just in terms of pattern sake. Oh, wow, there's one with pies in it. Everybody loves pie. That's how you defeat, uh, oh, was it a queen jellyfish? A king jellyfish. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves pie. Yes, it wasn't a hat. Well, these aren't pies. These are bombs. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, classic. He cried you a sweater of tears. So um, let's look at the uh, the pattern here. The numerator, 1, 3, 5, 7. Those numbers are odd starting at 1. So I would say uh, 2n minus 1 seems to match that pretty quick. And the denominators, uh, are those counting by 4s? Is it going to be a 4n something? No, that pattern works for the first two, but now we'll look at the first three. Oh, it appears as though they're doubling. Dublin. Uh, so 2 to the n is what I would have there. Um, no. Nope. Two to the n plus 1. Well, 2 to the first power would be 2. Now, question, uh, my friends, would it be plus 1 like this? a little plus 1, because 2 to the 2nd is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16. Okay. Um, now, to determine convergence for this, what would you guys recommend? Hmm. I don't think I'd want to necessarily compare this to any of the other series. Well, however, uh, if you notice the instructions on this section, <coughs> it specifically just says determine whether each series is convergent or divergent. It does not specify which method to use. Yeah, I'm guessing that the ratio test uh, would be a good way to determine this. Um, so plug in... Over... Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. So I replace all of the n's 
with n plus 1s. So this would be 2n plus 2, right, when I distribute, and then minus 1, so 2n plus 1. No? No, the, the whole n had to be replaced by an n plus 1. So when I distribute, it'd be 2n plus 2 minus 1, I believe. Yeah. I believe, yeah. Uh, and then here, this one's just 2 to the n plus 2. So could someone describe what I do next? It's been a couple of days since the ratio test. Uh, of which one over which one? I might just jump right into multiplying by the reciprocal because I'm lazy and because we've seen this before, right? So, right, I think we can skip that step fairly. Uh, okay, ooh, here's some interesting canceling. Uh, I was reciprocating this guy, right? So 2 to the n plus 1. Did I? Yep, so this is a sub n plus 1 divided by this guy, which reciprocated it, changed to multiplication. So um, what cancels and how? 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. And how many does this cancel with? Like this? Right, n plus 1 is less than, or, uh, one, two, less than uh, you're talking about this two, right? Yeah. Yes. So right. Two well, we'll think about this. Uh, if this was 2 to the 7th over 2 to the 8th, I'd be left with just a 2 on the denominator. If this was 2 to the 30th over 2 to the 31st, I'd just be left with 2 on the bottom n plus 1 is 1 less than n plus 2, so it would cancel with all of those, leaving 1 behind. So a 2 to the first is what would be remaining. Cross out what 2? Oh, yeah, this 2 here, yep. Yep, yep. Yep. There we are. Uh, so we would have the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, 2n over, distribute the 2 here, right, uh, 4n minus 2. And um, what did I do wrong? Right, but I can divide everything through by n, or if you're just really familiar with this test, I can just kind of compare the ratio of the leading coefficients. If you remember doing uh, horizontal asymptotes for rational functions back in the day, uh, but, so I'm expecting 2 over 4 to be my answer, or 1 half, and then since r is less than 1, I'm expecting it to be convergent. But I'll finish this limit for reals. Why not? Uh, so limit as n approaches infinity of 2n over n plus 1 over n uh, over 4n over n minus 2 over n is the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 plus 1 over n over 4 minus 2 over n, and then, uh, yeah, these are approaching 0. That approaches 2 fourths, which is 1 half. And because absolute value of r is less than 1, this is convergent. All right? Good stuff. Um, so actually, a lot of the skills of pattern recognition, uh, like figuring out this term, are going to be very helpful for today's lesson, uh, which is sigma notation, which we will do in but a moment. So uh, hopefully we're all pretty 